I want to share something with you from the word of God. And I need a reader today because I'm going to, now I'm going to go ahead and act like a little bit how I feel today. Well, a part of me, a part of me uh, feel like I'm going to run through this place. But then, then there's another part of me that says, try it if you dare. And so, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to do it. But I want, if you will allow me, I want to share something with you from the scripture that I, I know is going to be a blessing. So I need a reader. Who's a good reader? I got one? All right. I need a reader. And I want you to get um, two por uh, 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 passages of scripture. The gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number four, verses 18 and 19. And then 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. St. Luke, chapter four verses 18 and 19, and then 1 Corinthians 11, 29, and 30. St. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. So I'll stand for, reading, stand of for the word. reading of the word. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Listen, I want you to listen to each one. Jesus is talking to the people in his hometown, and he is telling them who he is. He is explaining, he is explaining his mission statement. He is giving them his, his credentials. Okay? The Lord has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor. To preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent, sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set a lip at liberty them that are bruised. Mm -hmm. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Uh-huh. Keep reading. And he closed the book, mm -hmm. and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. Keep going. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Read. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Read. And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which he proceeded out of his mouth. Yeah. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? Uh-huh. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me, This proper physician, heal thyself. Read. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. Mm -hmm. And he said, Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. No prophet is accepted in his own country. Listen. But I tell you of a truth. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias. Uh-huh. When the heaven was shut up three years and six months, mm -hmm. when great famine was throughout all the land, mm -hmm. but unto none of them was Elias sent, mm -hmm. save unto Sarapeta, mm -hmm. a city of Sidon, mm -hmm. unto a woman that was a widow. Mm -hmm. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Eliseus, mm -hmm. the prophet, and none of them was cleansed, mm -hmm. save in Naaman, the Syrian. Mm -hmm. And all they in the synagogue, Listen. when they heard these things, were filled with wrath uh -huh. and rose up and thrust him out of the city mm -hmm. and led him unto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built yeah. and that they might cast him down headlong. Stop right there. Now, let's go to, oh, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. 1 Corinthians 11. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, mm -hmm. eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, mm -hmm. not discerning the Lord's body. Mm -hmm. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
Thank you. May the Lord add revelation to the reading of his already blessed word and sanctify it deep within our hearts. Father, we thank you because you divinely arranged for us to be here at this moment to hear this word. I pray that you would grant me the anointing, grant me the strength, the stamina to preach your word today. I pray that someone would be lifted from the word that they will hear. Anoint my lips, anoint the ears of the listeners. Say what you want to say, and we'll thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at somebody and tell them you've got to discern the body. Now, discern the body. Now, that's not a, I usually like to choose a more catchy type of uh, subject. Um, so maybe eat it and leave no crumbs. You know, I, 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 but, but I want to, there's a message that I want you to take because I have, and, and TLC, Y'all hearing it again, so just 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 enjoy it. I have I have read this scripture my entire life. I've been in church my entire life. I've heard and read this scripture as as I as a pastor, as I did communion. I read this scripture, but I cannot believe that I've never spent something that is so this is weighty. Because it says this is a reason why many are sick and many are dying. So communion, there's something about this whole thing that we've got to pay attention to. And as God drew my attention to this text and I looked at it, he magnified some things in it. When Jesus, in, in our Luke's text, when Jesus says who he is, the Lord has anointed me. He is, his anointing is upon me to preach the gospel, to, to speak good news to them that, that are captives, to tell them about deliverance. He gives all of this who he is. Because when you're getting ready to do something great, you got to know who you are. Yes. Yes, sir. And you got to know who you are when nobody else, when nobody, when, when they pay you no attention, when they don't acknowledge you, when they don't acknowledge your gift, they don't acknowledge your anointing, you still have to know who you are. You've got to know. And so Jesus starts giving them how a prophet is without honor in his own home. And he goes on to give further explanation. He brings up Elijah and Elisha, how they were prophets and, and where they were, there were many widows where Elijah was, many widows that needed a miracle all the way to Zarephath to a, a, a strange widow woman in a strange land in order for him to use his gift. Same when he talks about Elisha. God had to take him to Naaman, where Naaman was, a whole nother country, so that he could use and operate in his gift. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand where you are, they might not acknowledge you, but God will open up a door. God will bring you someplace where what he has called you and saved you for will be manifested. Hunt somebody and tell them just give it a little more time. Give it a little more time. 
And so, and so Jesus, Jesus makes this plain. You know, other wi widows needed a miracle. Other lepers needed to be made whole. But they didn't receive it because they did not really know who Elisha and Elijah were. They did not honor their giftings and their callings. And so God said, okay, I got somebody else. See, you got to understand, if the people you try to give it to don't want it, God's got something else. Don't, don't, you, don't you go through no changes. God's going to hook you up with somebody. And that's why you got to be keen in the spirit. When you're just going about your ordinary life, when you're just going from day to day, when you're going in the mall, be keen in the spirit. When you're in the supermarket, be keen in your spirit. Always be ready because you don't know when God is going to use you to manifest the gifting that he has put inside of you. Okay? And so Jesus, when, 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 when Jesus says that, at first, they were excited about it. At first, they liked it. But then after a while, I guess they thought about it. And they said, wait a minute. That's just Joseph's son. That's just Joseph's son. He, that's the carpenter's son. He up there talking about he's, he's anointed. And, and to the Jews, when you talk about the anointing, they think Messiah. Because Messiah means the anointed one, the Christ, the Christos, the, the Messiah. And so when they hear that, they, they're saying, who, who, who does he think he is? He's, he's just. It is possible for people to know you, but not know you. Some people right in your family. Some people that you grew up with in the neighborhood. Some people that's been in your house. They have no idea who you are. And so, and so Jesus, when, when, when Jesus says that, they're ready to throw him off the cliff because they have not discerned who Jesus is. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important that we now understand the body of Christ. We must understand the body of Christ. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you three aspects of the body of Christ. The, the, the first aspect that I want to talk about is the sacrificial body of Jesus. Because he is, he is the sacrificial lamb. When John sees him, he says, behold, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He is, he is the, the one that has to endure the beatings. He's the one that has to endure the cross. He's the one that has to endure being spat upon and mistreated. Ladies and gentlemen, you must understand that if we're going to be the body of Christ, a part of that is being the sacrificial body of Jesus Christ. In other words, you are going to have to go through some of what the sacrificial Jesus, hey God, what he went through. I know we don't like it, and I'm going to hurry, but we don't like it when we have to uh, uh, endure certain things and when we have to take certain things to plead the blood of Jesus. But I want to tell you something. There are some things that no matter how much you plead the blood, you're going to have to go through it. That there are some situations that you are going to endure in your flesh that you just going to have to take it. Help me preach to somebody hunt somebody and tell them you're just gonna have to take that 
You're just going to have to take the L. You're going to have to just, just you're going to have to just deal with that. Y'all ain't helping me. And, and you're going to have to deal with it without going off, without cussing somebody out, without having a fight out in front of the church. Because a part of your assignment being the body of Christ is you got to do, you got to endure. See, because some good came out of all that Jesus endured. Because he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes all that his body went through did something good for your life. Even when they put the crown of thorns on his head, he had to feel that so that when stuff be messing with your head and voices be talking in your head and telling you to do something crazy, he, he absorbed it. And so his, his sacrificial body had to go through it. Mm, but it doesn't end there. I that's some good news to tell somebody who's been taking some shots you've been hit you've been bruised you've been wounded you've been crying you still try to go on and fulfill your assignment with tears running down your face you try to keep going on but God send me here to tell you that it does not end there. It does not end like that because after Jesus takes the worst blow, the next body of Christ, that's the glorified body of Christ. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. I want you to get somebody by the hand and tell them, neighbor, if I can just go through this, I'm going to be glorified. The next time you see me, I'm not going to look the same. The next time you see me, you're not going to see me bleeding and hurting and crying. You're going to see the glorified. The glorified. Uh, I feel like having church this morning. God's going to glorify you. Do you hear what I'm saying? If you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. I need somebody that's going through something right now. I need you to give him the best praise you can because it's only a setup. It's only the setup for you to become a fool. Uh, I want to see how many wounded healers I got in the room. See, some of y'all don't understand that because you're so busy nursing your wounds. You're so busy being bitter over who wounded you and you want to get somebody back and you want to tell somebody off. But sometimes, some of us, we know how to deal with our wounds, keep the blood and infection from getting on somebody else while you help them heal. I need you, if you know what I'm talking about, tell somebody, I am a wounded healer. I'm, I'm a wounded healer because I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, and, and I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about being glorified when we go into heaven. I'm almost finished, but I'm talking about the glorification that comes while you're on earth. Because Jesus, Jesus in his glorified body, while he was on earth, earth he did he did some crazy stuff as a matter of fact when when the couldn't tell that that was Jesus uh, I want you to understand or they thought he was the gardener but but here's what I, I want you to understand that you're going to go through 
what you got to go through in your sacrificial body. But when you come out with your glorified self, people won't even be able to identify you. Hey, 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 hey. I want out of this. You won't even be able to recognize me. While I'm going through this, I look broke. I look down. I look sad. Oh, but baby, when I come out of this, I'm coming out of this looking good. I'm coming out of this better than I've ever been. I might be broke now, but I'm coming out rich. It's like the... It's like, like the children of Israel, like the children of Israel, after being in bondage oh for 400 years, uh -huh. 400 years, and the night that they come out, they're coming out, now they, they've been slaves uh -huh. for 400 years. They got slave clothes on. But the favor of God, yes, the favor of God, Cause them to come out with riches, yeah. with gold, yeah. with silver. Yeah. I don't know who I'm prophesying to in here today, but you are coming out better than you've ever been in your entire life. I want somebody to start praising God now because you're going through something right now. Right now, you're going through something and you feel the weight and you feel the heaviness. But God told me to tell you, you're coming out with a car. I don't know who you are, but you're coming out. You better get up and praise him. Y'all better help. You better help her. Help her. I said help her, church. Because maybe it's not just one. Maybe it's not just one. Okay. Let me finish. I'm almost finished. My time is almost up. So you have, you have his, his resurrected body and you have his sacrificial body. And you, you, we are now considered the body of Christ. And people, but people don't discern who we are because they've looked at what we have gone through and they've come to a conclusion that if she was really all of that, if he was really all of that, why is he going through all of that? But they don't understand that all that you go through is a part of you being able to manifest uh, who you are anointed to be. You have to go through it. You have to deal with it. You can't avoid it. You can't run away from it because it is part of the process of making you who you are. And so people, they don't they don't discern it. They look at you and they judge you by what they see. And they say, oh, this, it's, it, she, she ain't, she ain't going to do nothing. She ain't going to be nothing. But today, God says that we have to discern the body of Christ. Now, when we talk about discerning the body of Christ, I'm not just talking about this, this communion up here. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about us as the body being able, because he said that many are dead and many are sick because they don't discern the body of Christ. What are you trying to say? The problem is, is that there are others in the body of Christ that have not discerned us. And some of the problems that's in the church is because people have not yet discerned you. There are some people that have not, they have not gotten the depth of the eternal 
anointing that's in your man of God because they know Daryl, but they don't know Daryl. They haven't been able to tap in to, to he might have a word for me. He, he might have the key for a miracle for me because they keep looking at him as Daryl. And there are some of you that are sitting in your seat right now that people have no idea of the anointing that's on your life. They have not discerned because they heard you have a nasty past. They heard that you did some stuff that you should not do and you've embarrassed yourself and you've embarrassed God but they'd have no idea that that was sacrificed on the cross. Y'all didn't get it? I said the me that mess up was sacrificed on the cross. The me that used to do all kinds of self drink, smoke, everything. That part was sacrificed on the cross. And when I came to the altar and gave my life to Jesus, there was a resurrection. And that's why the scripture says that you who were dead in trespasses and sin has he what we do in the church. But I want to talk, I want you to know that the real quickening was when God pulled you up out of the smut out of the dirt when he pulled you out of your mess and anointed you you can't hold me to who I used to be cause all things are passed away and all things have become new I need everybody that know that you're a new creation to open up your mouth, lift up your hand. Jesus in his glorified self on the earth, they didn't know who he was and in rooms that had locked him out. Uh, thought they can lock you out but what they don't understand that in my glorified body you don't have to open the door for me I just walk through it I'm what y'all ain't gonna help me get your neighbor by the hand and tell them neighbor I feel like 2023 is gonna be the year that I walk through closed doors we always dance about the open doors but I need somebody that believes that the people that try to lock you out they try to lock you out the position they try to lock you out of the house they try to lock you out of the loan but I heard God said you're getting ready to walk through Close doors. You don't have to like me. I'm still getting in. You don't have to help me. I'm still going to get what God promised me. I need somebody to open up your mouth and give God the loudest. Just do me a favor. I hate to trouble you, but I want you to show the devil how you're going to walk through a closed lock door. Yes, sir. I see somebody got it. I heard God say you don't have to walk through it. You can dance through it. Hey! Tell somebody, excuse me. Cause I feel like dancing through a locked door. They thought they were gonna keep me from getting a fulfillment of my prophecy. But I, I, I'm gonna 
walk through it. Come on, somebody dance through the door. Dance through it. Go ahead, dance through it. Y'all don't know what doors they dancing through. to me, I have to tell you this. Some of you people don't discern the power that's in your mouth. They don't discern. The scripture said because they don't discern the body that they sleep. Is it possible that if somebody just understood who I was, I could have said something that would have kept them, snatched them back from the clutches of death. Is it possible that I, I don't have no robe, I don't have no collar, but I have a word in my mouth that if I would have released it, it could have changed somebody's life. Here's the problem, and I'm going. I have to get to another service. When you have not yet discerned who you are. We, as your pastors and preachers, we have done our job. When you finally figure out who you are. When you finally understand when you spend enough time with God and you have discerned. See, when Jesus said that, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me to, to bind up the broken heart. He knew, he discerned who he was. And when they didn't like him, it didn't change nothing. Because they don't like you, it does not change who you are because they don't accept you it does not change who you are because if you have discerned who you are you'll I, I wish I, I yeah I'm coming back cuz 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 if you understood who you are you don't have to get up and, and supposed to be preaching and you cussing about somebody trying to mess with your husband I don't mean to be messy. But but I got when you understand who you are, 
when you discern who you are, that when God gives you a platform, when, when people stop what they're doing and give you 30, 40 minutes of their attention, they don't want to hear about the mess that's in your house. Y'all ain't helping me. Because first of all, instead of you checking her, you need to check your husband. I'm sorry. They're pulling me back in. Pulling you back in. But you, are y'all understanding me? Lift your hands. The power of God is about to move through this place. Because you're going to discern who you are. The last thing I want to tell you is when you come to this table, I want you to discern the body. You understand? Because that's the, that's the third aspect of this message, that you must discern the body of Christ. I'm talking about when you come to the table, you must understand what, you're, what you have in your hand. When you take that bread, I wish I could stay here and do it with you. And this message was in my spirit so much this morning that we had an impromptu pop-up communion. Because, because sometimes we don't understand. When we look at that bread, when we look at that eat, for this is my body. When you partake of the body... You get no stripes that heal cancer. Uh, my wife, my wife is home with COVID today. And I told her after God gave me this word, I said, as soon as you feel well enough to go down in that kitchen, go get some bread and get some juice or get the body of Jesus went through because his blood was for you to be saved. The blood is about your salvation without the shana, without the shedding of blood. There's no remission of sin. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But he said, you don't discern the body. You understand the blood, but you don't discern the body. If you understand the body, you, you will understand. And I told the church this. And, and, and I know this is your church. You're the pastor here. You're the boss here. I'm just telling you what I told in your house. I want you to normalize because the, the preachers got to be there with their collars on in order to. No. As, he said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. When you. Uh, my Sunday, when you take this communion today, if you got sickness in your body, when I took my communion this morning, I said, neck pain, you gonna have to get out of here. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back pain, you gonna have to get out of here. High blood pressure, you gonna have to get out of here. It is your faith, I want you to normalize it. Those of you who have sicknesses, I want you to take communion. Some people say you're trivializing it. No, it's your heart. It's your heart. It's the motive of your heart. If you do it, remembering, discern it. So don't let communion become common. Don't let it become common. Even though you will do it more often. You won't have to be in church. You won't have to have a, no, you have the scripture, you have the word. Receive it and receive your Somebody that's got some pain. If you have faith, if you believe it, it's gonna even work for your depression.
it's not just going to be for your physical pain but for your emotional pain Ah, it's going to even heal broken hearts. Somebody lift your hand and...